Hi guys, today we're going to be reading Child of the Flower Song People, Lucy Menes, Daughter of the Nahua, written by Gloria Mesqua, illustrated by Duncan Tonatiu. Let's see what the story is all about. Child of the Flower Song People. A girl stared at the stars sprinkling the hammock of sky. Like many other nights, she listened to the whispering of the ancient Aztecs in the wind. She heard their Xochihuacuat, their flower song. She listened as the elders repeated tales their grandfathers' grandfathers had told. How sacred stream and mountains protect them. How the Nahua lost their land to Cortes, the conqueror, and the Spaniards who follow him. She was Luz Jimenez, child of the flower song people, the powerful Aztecs who called themselves Nahua, who lost their land, but who did not disappear. In the Milpa Alta, a village slung between two mountains. Luz's father harvested maguey and corn. She watched closely as her mother taught her how to grind corn in a metate, how to twist yarn with her toes, how to weave on a loom. Luz was curious about everything, which mushrooms were good to eat and which will make you sick, which popote could be brooms, which herbs medicines. She hummed, she hummed as she worked, words glowing and swirling her head in the Aztec language, Nahuatl. This was life for the Nahua, and Luz was soaked with and Luz was soaked it all in. <laughs> Evenings by the fire, Luz listened eagerly to stories about the mountain boy, the poston, the son of a god, how he never missed when he shot quail and turkeys for the people to eat, but how he hung bells on a steeple no one could reach, and how he outwitted a man eating giant, and how Malintzin, betrayer of the Aztecs, was swept to the top of a mountain where she cries in the wind at night, pulling her long black hair. Luz wove all these old stories into her heart, thought them she tasted bitter sorrow how the Nahua suffered, and sweet joy, how her people survived. Luz was a child of the flower song people. Morning on the way to market, Luz and her mother passed the teacher's house. Students bent over learning. Luz carried an empty place inside. She yearned to know what was written on papers. A secret lunging belonged to budding her heart. The secret fluttered lightly like wings in her chest. She will study hard. She will learn what the squiggles meant. She will learn to read. But Luz, like the other native people, was a forgotten shadow to those who governed. There was no public school for them. 
Then suddenly, the government offered free schooling, nor required it. To turn the native children into modern ones, like the descendants of the Spanish who ruled the country, who thought only their ways were right and proper. Español. Ah. Ah. Mornings. Luz learned from Spanish school books. Afternoons, she studied dressmaking, drawings, and baking bread, not the corn tortillas of their people. Luz excelled and won many prizes, and her voice sparkled as she told Nahua stories in secret to the other children. If the students spoke Nahua instead of Spanish, the teachers punished them. They had to give up their Nahua clothes, where modern ones like in the cities. The building flower in Luz's heart might have withered, but it did not. These new rules were changing the Nahua, who Luz was different. She longed to blossom carrying the beautiful traditions of her people with her. Luz found strength in remembering how old Tehuistli, not wanting to let his daughter go, turned her and the young man she loved into mountains. Ishtash Sihualt, sleeping lady, and Popocatepelt, smoky mountain, how the mountains protected the people and brought precious rain. Luz was a child of the flower song people, she wanted to protect the Nahua ways. Her body tingling, Luz spilled her secret to very few. I want to be a teacher when I grow up. Her secret journey was beginning to bloom. Imagining teaching future generations. But at 13th, her dreams swirled away in a storm. The Mexican Revolution came to Milpa Alta. Soldiers stole their food. They burned their precious home and school to the rubble. Her father, like nearly all the other men, died. Luz and her mother and sisters fled to Mexico City at night, stars lighting the way. Others followed. Luz said, not a soul was left. In the large, unfamiliar city, clogged with too many sounds, smells, and people, the widows and girls struggled to make a living. They sold homemade atole, tamales, or handicrafts. But Luz, with growing strength, opened up to something much different for Inahua. She found a job posing for artists drawn to her strong features. Her sturdy body, her large dark eyes, as she posed, she taught them the gift she had learned from the beginnings, grinding corn in a metate, twisting yarn with her toes, weaving on a loom. Luz was a natural model and teacher. She understood what the artist needed without being told. Artists until then had painted the Spanish heritage of Mexico, the light-skinned Europeans, and their religious beliefs. But these artists of the 20th century honored the native people who had been colonized by the Spanish, stripped of their language and culture, shamed and mistreated. Luz represented her people well through her indigenous features, her skills, and being true to her roots. Luz became the most well-known model in all of Mexico for artists like Diego Rivera, Fernando Leal, Tina Modotti, Gian Charlotte, and others. Painters painted, photographers clicked, sculptors carved. The world recognized the beauty and strength of the native people. After 500 years of being in shadows, through Luz, the world came to know the spirit of Mexico. 
though many artists thought out Luz, her heart still longed to teach. After the revolution, Luz returned to Milpa Alta and applied to be a teacher, but without being given a reason, Luz was rejected. Once again, her dream seems to swirl away forever like petals on the wind. But in the city, she had become friends with the artists and scholars. These scholars wanted to learn Nahua culture. They wanted to learn Nahua language. They wanted to go to Milpa Alta. So Luz at last became a teacher, weaving the threads of her flower song. So she called her language and culture into their hearts. Eagerly, she led anthropologists and artists on tours of Milva Alta. There she showed them how the Nahua knew good mushrooms from bad, which people made strong brooms, how they used herbs for medicine. Luz also took them to Shalma, where the visitors watched native festival dancers and worshippers who had walked for days to place candles or flowers at the church. Luz brought to life the world of the native Mexican people, and their pride in their culture and roots. Inspired by Luz's teachings, the artist painted, the scholars wrote, Luz was a powerful woman of the flower song people. Luz told her tales to a college professor, Fernando, or casitas, an anthropologist, he wrote down what she patiently told him in a walt, word by word, phrase by phrase, week by week. Luz was a living link to the Aztecs, her words publishing books to teach future generations, the language of her people, professor or casitas, asked her to help him teach Nahuatl at the College of Mexico City. Like the mountains, Iztachihuatl and Popocatepelt, she protected the dying Nahuatl culture. Her memories were some of the precious few written in the lively voice of one of their own as he was disappearing in the wind. At long last, Lucy's heart bloomed fully. Her dream of being a teacher had come true, true in more ways than the young girl glazing at the sprinkled stars could have ever imagined, just by being Nahua, just by being herself. Luz breathed life into so she dwelt the flower song of the Nahua and carried their fading voice into the future. Author's note, I have seen many good things and many bad things in my life, but what I loved most was when I was a little girl and started going to school, Luz Jimenez. Luz Jimenez, modeling for artists. And this is her, Luz Jimenez. In the 1920s. That was the end of the book, guys. She was Luz Jimenez, child of the flower song people, the powerful Aztec who called himself Nahua, who lost their land but who did not disappear. This was a beautiful book, guys. I'll see you. Bye.